Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Chapter 25. After a week spent in professions of love and schemes of felicity, Mr. Collins was called from his amiable Charlotte by the arrival of Saturday. The pain of separation, however, might be alleviated on his side by preparations for the reception of his bride, as he had reason to hope that shortly after his next return to Hertfordshire, the day would be fixed that was to make him the happiest of men. He took leave of his relations at Longbourn, and as much solemnity as before, wished his fair cousin's health and happiness again, and promised their father another letter of thanks. On the following Monday, Mrs. Bennet had the pleasure of receiving her brother and his wife, who came, as usual, to spend Christmas at the Longbourn. Mr. Gardiner was a sensible gentleman-like man, greatly superior to his sister, as well as by nature and as education. And other felt ladies would have had a diff difficulty believing that a man who lived by a trade with and within view of his own warehouses could be could have been so well bred and agreeable. Mrs. Gardiner, who was several years younger than Mrs. Bennet, and Mrs. Phillips, who was an amiable, intelligent, elegant young woman, and a great favourite with all the, her long-born nieces. Between the two eldest and herself, especially there subsisted a very particular regard, they had frequently been staying with her in town. The first part of Mrs. Gardiner's business on her arrival was to distribute her presents and describe the newest fashions. When this was done, she had a less active part to play. It became her turn to listen. Mrs. Bennet had many grievances to relate and much to complain of. They had all been very ill and used since that she last saw her sister. Two of her girls had been on the point of the marriage, and after all there was nothing in it. I do not blame Jane, she continued, for Jane would have got Mr. Bingley if she could. But Lizzie, oh, sister, it is very hard to think that she might have been Mr. Collins's wife by this time. Had it not been for her own perseverance, he made her an offer in this very room, and she refused him. The consequent of it is that Lady Lucas will have a daughter married before I have, and the Longbourn estate is just as much entitled as ever. The Lucases are a very artful people indeed. Sister, they are all for what they can get. I'm sorry to say it of them, but it is so. It makes me very nervous and poorly to be thwarted so in my own family, and to have neighbours who think of themselves before anybody else. However, your coming just in this time is the greatest of comforts, and I am very glad to hear what you tell us of the long sleeves. Mrs. Gardiner, to whom the chief of this news had been given before in the course of Jane and Elizabeth's correspondence with her, made her sister a slight answer, and in comparison to her nieces turned to the conversation. When alone with Elizabeth afterwards, she spoke more on the subject. It seems, more li it seems likely to have been a desirable match for Jane, said she. I am sorry it went off, but these things happen so often. A young man such as you describe, Mr. Bingley, so easily falls in love with a pretty girl for a few weeks, and when accident separates them so easily forgets her. These sort of inconstancies are very frequent. An excellent consolation in its way, said Elizabeth, but it will not do for us. We do not suffer by accident. It does not, ho oh, uh, it does not often happen that the interference of friends will persuade a young man of independent fortune to think no more of a girl whom he was violently in love with only a few days before. But that expression of violently in love is so hackneyed, it's so doubtful, so indefinite, that it gives me very little idea. It is often applied to feelings which arise from half-hour's acquaintance, as to real strong attachment. Pray, how violent was Mr. Bingley in love? I never saw a more promising inclination. He was going quite inattentive to other people and wholly engrossed in her. Every time they met, it was more decided and remarkable. At his own ball, he offended two or three young ladies by not asking them to dance and spoke to him twice, myself, without receiving an answer. Could there be finer symptoms? It's not generally in civility, the very essence of love. Oh, yes, that kind of love which I suppose to him to have felt, poor Jane. I'm sorry for her, because with her disposition she may not get over it immediately. It had better if it had be it had better have happened to you, Lizzie. You would have laughed yourself out of it sooner. But do you think she would be prevailed on to go back with us? Change of scene might be service. Perhaps a little relief from home may be as useful as anything. Elizabeth was exceedingly pleased with this proposal and felt persuaded of her sister's ready acquiescence. 
I hope, added Mrs. Gardiner, that no consideration with regard to this young man will influence her. We live in so different a part of town, all of our connections are so different, and as you well know, we can go out so little that it is very improbable they should meet at all, unless he really comes to see her. And that is quite impossible, for he is now in the custody of his friend, and Mr. Darcy would no more offer him to call on Jane in such part of London. My dear aunt, how could you think of it? Mr. Darcy may perhaps have heard such a place of Grace Church Street, but he would hardly think that a month's ablution enough to cleanse him from his impurities where he wants to enter it and depend on it. Mr. Bingley never stirs without him. So much better. I hope they will not meet at all, but does not Jane correspond with the sister? She will not be able to help calling. She will drop the acquaintance entirely. But in spite of the certainty in which Elizabeth affected to place this point, as well as the still more interesting one of Mr. Bingley's being held from seeing Jane, she felt the solitude on the subject in which uh, convinced her on examination that she did not consider it entirely hopeless. It was possible sometimes, she thought it probable, that his affection might be reanimated and the influence of his friend successfully combated by a more natural influence of Jane's attractions. Miss Bennet accepted her aunt's invitation with pleasure, and the Bingleys were no otherwise in her thoughts at the time. Then, as she hoped that, by Caroline's not living in the same house with her brother, she might occasionally spend a morning with her without any danger of seeing him. The gardener stayed a week at Longburn, and with and what with the Phillipses and Lucases and the officers, there was not a day without its engagement. Mrs. Bennet had so carefully provided for the entertainment of her brother and sister that they did not once sit down to a family dinner with when the engagement was for home. Some of the officers always made part of it, which officers Mr. Wickham was sure to be one, and on these occasions Mrs. Gardiner, rendered suspicious by Elizabeth's warm commendation of him, narrowly observed them both, without supposing them. From what she saw to be very seriously in love with their preference of each other was plain enough to make her a little uneasy. She resolved to speak to Elizabeth on the subject before she left for Hertfordshire, and represent to her the imprudence of encouraging such an attachment. To Mrs. Gardiner, Wickham had one means of affording pleasure, unconnected with his general powers. About ten or a dozen years ago before her marriage, she had spent a considerable time in that very part of Derbyshire to which she belonged. They had therefore many acquaintance in, that, in common. And though Wickham had been little there since the death of Darcy's father five years before, it was yet in his powers to give her fresher intelligence of her former friends than she had been in the way of procuring. Mrs. Gardiner had seen Pemberley and known the late Mr. Darcy by character perfectly well. He, consequently, was an inexhaustible subject of discourse in comparing her recollection of Pemberley with the minute, minute description which Wickham could give, and bestowing her tribute of praise on the character of its late possessor, she, he was delighting him, both him and herself on being made acquainted with the present Mr. Darcy's treatment of him. She tried to remember something of that gentleman's reputed disposition when a quite a lad which might agree with it was confident at last and she recollected having heard mr fitzwilliam darcy formerly spoken of as a very proud ill-natured boy